ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 105, maybe 106, oh, 105 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I am trying something different with the sound. I've decided to, instead of using the handheld microphone, I'm using the microphone that's on top of the little camera that I record these podcasts with, because I've noticed that it just sounds really good to me, but please do let me know if this sounds better or worse. If it sounds better, tell me. If it sounds worse, tell me, and I'll switch back to the old setup. Uh, The reason why I'm changing it is because holding the microphone sounds awesome, but you can't hear anything outside of what the fuck, if I'm not holding it close to my mouth, you can't hear anything. And I felt like the charm of my podcast kind of was occasionally I would step away from the microphone, do some shit in the background. I don't know, but, and, and you could hear it off in the distance and you could be like, what a fucking idiot. But because I had the handheld microphone, just couldn't do that shit, uh, at all. So let me know if this sounds better or worse. Snapchat me, Insta DM me, post it in the Facebook group, whatever. Right? Now, uh, where was I? What was I talking about last week? Oh, that's right. I was talking about the alone experience. So, this can't put his fingers in my mouth, bro. Right? If you haven't listened to last week's episode, go and listen to it. I cut the story short because I had to go and do radio shit, but... I'm just going straight back in. Fuck the recap. Go and listen to the last episode if you don't know what I'm talking about. This guy, right? I'm going through this alone experience. I've got face paint on. This cunt puts his fingers in my mouth, right? So after this dude puts his fingers in my mouth, I move on to the next room. This girl takes my hand. She takes me out of the mouth rape tent. And she takes me into another room. And she's... And I'm fucking angry. I've got like Dorito dust or whatever he put on his fingers and then rubbed into my teeth. He like put it in my mouth and went all around my teeth like he was a fucking dentist. It was the worst, right? So I got I got Dorito shit all over my face. Someone's grabbed my hand and just take me into another room. I haven't had time to wipe it off my face. I assume I look like I've just been fucking binging on Doritos and I've also been raped. Like, I'm, I'm a Dorito-covered rape victim at the moment. And this dude... So they take me into the other room. And then there's this girl. They make me stand on a cross. And I'm looking at this chick. And I'm fucking angry. And the whole thing is... It's an alone experience. So I'm waiting for them to do shit to me. For, like, right? Give me an experience, you dogs. But what I didn't realize is that I was also supposed to do stuff... By paying attention to my surroundings. And you guys know me, right? The only time I'm paying attention to my surroundings is when I'm yelling at a fucking restaurant, okay? And I'm angry about the sizes of their cups or whether or not they're open or closed. I don't pay attention to my surroundings. I just go through life living in my own head, thinking about 20 years in the future about, oh, I'm going to do this next, (laughs) right? So I'm standing on this cross looking at this chick and she's staring at me and she's like half my height, really short girl. And she just looks me in the eyes and she goes, I'm no fashion. I didn't understand it. I was like, right. So this is the fucking mumble room where they just say shit to me that I can't understand. I'm like, cool, sweet, whatever. I'm just looking at her, waiting for her to do something. Then she looks at me and and she says a little bit louder, she goes, um, you're I'm like, all right. She's clearly repeated herself because I didn't understand her. But uh, problem is, I didn't understand her again. So instead of asking her, uh, sorry, wh- wh- what do you say? I just kept staring at her. I'm like, oh, she's going to do something. This is an experience, right? So I kept staring at her. She kept staring at me. We're both not moving. I'm st- I've got arms by my side. She's got arms by her side. We're both just... Staring at each other, doing nothing. And then she goes, move your arm. I'm like, ah, oh. all right, and I move my arm. And then she moves her arm. And I'm like, oh, you were saying I am your reflection. Right, two problems straight off the bat, okay? She's a shitty reflection because she's about half my height. 
So I don't know. I'm just she's she was like one of those funhouse mirrors. <laughs> That's what she was, where it makes you look really short. Or no, actually, realistically, I'm the fucking funhouse mirror, where she's the normal one, and I come in and I've stretched her reflection out. That's yeah, that's probably more what was going on. But anyway, I'm shitty at this whole experience because this dude's put his fingers in my mouth. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to make it my mission to crack this girl. Because every, every other person in a different room has been deadly serious. Some dude gave me a hug, put face paint on me. Some dude put his fingers in my mouth. I had to do yoga with a fucking ghost. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to crack this chick and I'm going to ruin the immersion. And so I move my arm, and then her arm goes up, and then I move my other arm, and her other arm goes up, and then I put my hands down my side, and I just look at her right in the eyes, and I smile, and then I just slowly move both my arms up to the left, and she slowly moves her arms up to the left, and then I just look her in the eyes, and I do a fucking dab. <laughs> <laughs> and then she does a dab, and I cracked her, I see, I was like, ah, I wasn't smiling, you're, you're not supposed to be smiling, and then I was like, Here's, it's the finishing move here, and I put my right fist out directly forwards, and I do a whip, and then she does a whip, and our fists touch, because it's a mirror, and she's fucking laughing now, and then I, I move backwards, and I hit her with the nay nay, and she lost it, and I was like, yes! Take that, alone immersive experience. I am the experience now. And then, um... <laughs> and then she's laughing, and then she just kicks me out of the room. She moves me on to the next thing. And I've still got fucking Dorito dust and shit all over my face. I finally have a chance to wipe it off. And I get pushed in this other room, and there's this old woman, and she's got... She's got a pot of tea. And she looks at me, and... and Dude, she says some fucking hippie bullshit that I don't even remember. Like, it was so... You know when someone just says a whole bunch of, like, acid buzzwords? Like, they've had too many, too many fucking hallucinogenic drugs. So they just start talking about spirits and being one with the earth and all this kind of shit. So you can't even concentrate. It's just so many words that just mean nothing. It's like you've just stepped into a philosophy class and they're talking about the reason why life doesn't exist. And you're like, cool, man. Oh, what a, what a great outlook to have on life. Oh, life doesn't mean anything. There's no reason for us to be here. All right, cool. What, what are we going to do with that information? Just sit in a room and be sad about it? <laughs> life doesn't mean anything. I'm going to use that as a reason to not chase me fucking dream. Why do anything? It doesn't matter, man. Cool, bro. Apathy is, is the way to go, man. Let's just be apathetic about fucking everything. Good on ya. Right? That's that's my only problem with philosophy is... Like, stoicism. That's a, I, I enjoy that form of philosophy. Where it's like, everything is your fault. Try and achieve what you can achieve. Put yourself... In situations that are uncomfortable so you can appreciate comfortable things and know that there are worse things out there and use that information to move forward. Look up some stoicism, man. It'll help you achieve. But the whole fucking philosophy that and that revolves around nothing matters, man. We're just so small. You know, like, you know when some fucking idiot posts Post a picture of the galaxy. Where you can see all the millions of planets and stars and dust and suns in the universe. And then there's a little arrow that points at the tiny speck that is Earth. And it goes, you are here. And everyone's like, whoa, man. That's so deep, bro. That just put everything into perspective, man. I'm just a little speck. On a speck, I'm a speck on a speck, man. Man, it just proved it just proved to me that everything in life just doesn't matter, bro. Nothing matters. It just put it all into perspective. My worries all of a sudden don't worry me anymore. <laughs> now it doesn't. Now it doesn't matter. I don't have to do anything because I'm a speck on a speck, bro. I'm just a fucking speck, man. And it's like, yeah, cool. What do you want me to do with that information? Oh yeah, 
The universe is big. Is that deep, is it? <laughs> Bro, did you know space is big? Whoa, man. Fucking blew my mind. I'm just a speck. Shut up, cunt. Anyway, so this... I'm in this next room, and this chick gets out some fucking tea. And she says a whole bunch of hippie bullshit. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm just angry now. I made the chick dab. That lightened my mood a little bit. And she gives me this tea, and I have a sip. Mainly just to, honestly, just to clear my mouth of the Dorito stuff. And I finish half of it, and I put it on the desk. And she looks at me, and she looks in the cup. And then she goes, she like goes, what are you doing, man? Finish the cup. But without saying anything. I'm like, I don't want, it. I don't want your tea. Sorry. Paid a hundred bucks. You gotta get. You gotta do better than tea. That's all I'm saying. All right? And then so she keeps pointing at the cups. I'm like, whatever. I finish it. For all I know, there could be ayahuasca in it, and the rest of the whole experience could have never happened. I was just seizing up in a fucking corner, rambling about dabbing my, to my reflection. Right? Could all be a hallucin hallucination. I, I might not even be fucking real anymore. I could be in a mental asylum. Thinking that I'm recording a podcast when in reality I'm just smearing my own shit on the walls. But anyway, I drank the tea. And then she moves me on to the, into the next room. And I know for a fact that the next guy was one of you. Right? So she moves me on to the next room and... Because my girlfriend also did this experience and he didn't do this to her, right? According to her, all he did was put face paint on her... And then give her headphones and tell her to hit play on the fucking clip and then kick her out of the room. But when I walked in, this dude was smiling, trying to hold it together. <laughs> like, I know the look. I know the recognition look. And he was one of you cunts, alright? So I go into the next room with the fan. And uh, what he does is he's got this goofy smile and he gives me a hug, which is strange. And then he puts pink face paint on me. And then he gives me headphones and tells me to hit play. So I'm like, all right. And then he kicks me out. I hit, I'm listening to this clip. And it's, it's saying all this hippie bullshit. But in between the shit, it's giving me instructions. So it's like, interrupt, exit the door, close it behind you, turn left, and then walk forwards. Do not look at anyone else. Right, so I exit and I go out the door and it's the door that we came in. And then, then there's the line of people that are waiting to go into the experiment. Um, so you just walk past and they all stare at you because you've got fucking face paint on, you've got headphones on, and then you've, you're like one of the many people who came out the door with headphones and face paint not talking to them. <laughs> so they're all just really confused like, fuck, what's happening? Are they actors? Are they part of this? Is this the end? So I'm listening to this thing and it tells me to go down the corridor. Turn left. Turn right. Go on this street. And I'm listening to this. And it's playing music. And I'm really trying to focus on it. Because if I get lost. I mean that's the end of the experience. It's only been about 20 minutes right? It said it would go for over an hour. So I'm like fuck. If I don't pay attention to this thing. I'm going to get lost. And I've just wasted $100 of my girlfriend's money. So now I'm outside on the street with fucking face paint on me. And uh, I don't think the recording took into account how fast I walk because of how tall I am. So eventually, when it's telling me to go down the street, I end up ahead of the instructions. So I'm walking down the street, and then this woman, like this 40-year-old chick, comes up to me with a pamphlet outside of a nightclub, and she's trying to get me to come into a nightclub. And she goes, hey... Hey man, you got to come in here. It's going to be awesome. And I can't really hear her because I'm focusing on this audio recording that's playing instructions. And she's like, hey, you got to come in here. And I'm like, no, no, sorry. I need to go this way. I don't want to talk to you. Sorry. And then, <laughs> and then she keeps trying to tell me to come in. And I've realized now that she was an actor. She was part of the alone experience. And she was trying to get me to come into the nightclub for the next part of the experience. But I'm an idiot listening to these fucking headphones. Not even focusing on what she's saying. She's just noise to me. So I keep walking down the street. And she follows me down the street. And I think she's just like a really pushy nightclub promoter. I'm like, no, I need to go down here. Can you please leave me alone? I'm sorry, right? 
And then I get like 50 meters away from where I was supposed to go in. And she's really insistent. She's like pulling on my arm. And I'm like, what is this fucking rude bitch going to let go? Like if it was a guy, I would have pushed him. But it's a, it's, you know, it's a 40 year old woman. I'm trying to be polite. I'm like, can you please leave me alone? Can you stop it? And sorry, I think the card cut out, right? So this woman's pulling on my arm. I'm telling her to go away, right? And she's like, no, you've got to come in here. You've got to come in here. I'm like, no, I really don't have to go anywhere. I'm sorry. Can you please leave me alone? Right? And she's pulling on me. And I'm like, can you leave me alone? I'm 50 meters away. I get to the corner and she literally moves around, stands in front of me. And she goes, stop, stop. You have to come with me. And I said, no, I don't. She goes, yes, you do. You have to come with me. And I literally looked at her and I just went, can you fuck off? Can you please fuck off? (laughs) I told the actor in the experience that was trying to get me to follow her instructions in an immersive way to fuck off because I'm listening to instructions in my headphones that have since finished. And then I tell this woman to fuck off and she's like, whoa, this is a bit... uh, I haven't experienced this kind of retardation before. And then... While this is happening, a group of fans come up to me and they're like, Hey, Lewis, man, how you going? Like three dudes. And then she's really confused because she is like, well, hang on. Are these people actors? I haven't seen these people before. Who are they? Why are they coming up to this guy? And they're like, bro, why you got face paint on? And I'm just fucking overwhelmed. And then she... I don't know why this keeps cutting out. Maybe it's the... Maybe this isn't the best decision to fucking do it. Sorry, guys. So I'm overwhelmed, like three dudes are trying to yell at me while I'm listening to these musical instructions while this chick, who I still don't understand is an actor, is trying to get me to come into a nightclub. Now she's confused because she doesn't understand who the fuck these other dudes are. I'm just like, I'm trying to listen to my headphones, can everyone leave me alone please? I don't want to waste my hundred dollars. Then she pulls out the pamphlet that she's been trying to show me and she shoves it in my face and she goes, look, look, Enola, Enola. And it said alone backwards. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not very good at riddles. I'm really sorry. Sorry about that. I was really rude. I'll go with you. And then literally I had to walk for two minutes with this woman who thinks I'm a fucking idiot going down the street. And then I go into this nightclub, right? And it, well, it's, a, it's more of a bar. It's like a bar nightclub thing. And I go in and no one's there. I look around. There's nobody there. I'm like, all right, uh, I guess I'm just going to sit down. And I tried reading the pamphlet because she gave it to me and it had all this nonsense on it about bodies and spirits and all that kind of shit. So I'm thinking that it's a riddle. I'm like, all right, just going to sit down and try and work out this riddle. Maybe that will tell me the next place to go. So I'm reading this thing. And then this, uh, about five minutes later, this woman comes up to me, beautiful girl in a red dress. And she's like, hey, I love your face paint. I'm like, ha, ah, thank you. But I'm trying to trying to read this, trying to look at this thing. She's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just doing some uh, experience thing. It's like hippie bullshit. I don't really understand it. And then she looked kind of cut. And I was like, but, you know, every everyone's into something different. So I'm trying to op- open my mind. And then she starts talking to me and she's just wouldn't leave me alone. So I'm like, all right, I'll talk to this chick. I'll figure out the riddle later, whatever. So I'm talking to this girl just about nothing. She's like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I just work in an office because I hate telling people I'm a comedian because then the rest of the conversation is about, wow, tell me a joke. Do you make much money? Oh my God, I couldn't do that. I don't know how you get on stage. Do you get nervous? Is it scary? Oh my God. Are you famous? Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Now I'm feeling a bit shit. Like, I hate that whole fucking conversation, right? And then, uh... I'm talking to her and she's t- talking to me. And then all of a sudden she goes, do you need to go to the bathroom? I'm like, uh, no, no, I don't. And then she's like, I think you should go to the bathroom. Like really says, like, I think you should go to the bathroom. And then I'm like, oh, she's an actor. Okay. All right. I'll go to the bathroom. That must be where the next clue is. So I leave her alone. She stays in there. I go to the bathroom and then there's, it's like one of those unisex bathrooms where it's just all cubicles. So, and then a place to wash your hands. So I walk into the bathroom and there's no one there apart from 
two girls really enthusiastically taking selfies in the mirror. And I look around the bathroom, I don't see any clues, but I'm like, oh, there's no way two girls would take selfies like that and that loudly. Obviously, they're actors. So I go up to them and I'm like, hey guys, how you going? And they look at me like I'm a creepy freak who's walked into the bathroom and started talking to female strangers. And that's when I realized, hmm, I guess they're not actors then. <laughs> uh, because I stood in the bathroom for like two minutes and these girls are taking selfies and looking at me like, who is this guy? And then I go up and talk to them. I, I must have looked like a fucking rapist, but I thought they were actors, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, they're not anybody, but nothing's happened in the bathroom uh, I had another look around, I couldn't figure out why I was supposed to be in the bathroom, so I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna leave, and ask the woman out the front, who got me into the thing, where to go, because I'm, I just suck at riddles, like, dude, if I was in Saw, I'd be fucking dead in, I'd be the first person to go, like, if there was a version, if there was, like, a PG version of Saw, that, where, instead of trying to solve riddles, where there was like a key inside your body. Instead of that, if they just got you to solve basic riddles, I would just kill myself. They'd be like, what gets wetter the more it dries? And I'd be like, nah, tapping out. Where's the handgun? Bang, shoot myself. It's like, I don't want to look like an idiot. I'd rather die. So I go to leap. Sorry, one second. I got to put my fucking laptop on charge before it dies and I lose all the miscellaneous bit of the end questions. See, this is why. This is why I'm not using the microphone so you can hear all of my fucking ambient. Laptop charger plugging in sound effects. Alright? And plugged, right? So I'm like, okay, I don't understand riddles. I'm too much of an idiot. I'm gonna go and talk to the woman who helped me out last time. Sorry, I'm not sorry, cut out again. I don't know what the fuck it is with this SD card. So I'm like, alright, I'm gonna go talk to the, the nice woman who I told to fuck off. And she just gave up trying to let me solve it myself, and she can tell me. Where to go next? So I go to leave the bathroom, right? And then all of a sudden, the girl who told me to go to the bathroom, in the pretty girl in the red dress, almost slams into me. She's like, hey, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I was just leaving the bathroom. I didn't, I didn't need to go. So I don't know why I came down here. And then she's like, hey, you should come with me. I'm like, oh, all right, here I come. And then she takes me back into the bathroom and she's like one of those people that stands too close. And I couldn't work out if she was acting or flirting. But I'm like, I'm just going to keep an eye on this shit. Can't work out. Because all I could think of was that waiver. where That, that I signed that acknowledged that there may be aggressive sexual touching. So I'm like, okay. I'm in a bathroom stall with a stranger. Is this the part of the immersive experience where I get raped in a stall? <laughs> I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to keep my wits about me. I've got my pepper spray and my rape whistle in my handbag. I'm just keeping an eye on the situation. And she takes me to the, one of the basins and she's like, you should wash your hands. And I was like, oh, I didn't go. Um, I don't need to, I didn't use the bathroom if that's what you're asking. She goes, oh, no, 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 I just think you should wash, you should wash your hands. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to wash my hands and I turn on the tap. And I, because I didn't, I, I didn't use the bathroom. I don't need to wash my hands. So I just put my hand under the tap. She goes, oh, is that how you wash your hands? You should use some soap. I'm like, all right. And I get a pump of soap on my hands and I start washing my hands. And she's like, that's better. I'm like, yeah, this is just so weird that this woman that I've just met is telling me to wash my hands in a bathroom and I'm freaking out about aggressive sexual touching. I'm like, is this where it happens? <laughs> or is that the next fucking rape dungeon room? Because this, because I'll scream. I'll scream. I, I don't care. Right, so I'm washing my hands and then she goes, oh, is that how you wash your hands? Didn't your parents teach you how to wash your hands? And I was like, oh, I mean, I guess they probably did. Maybe I've forgotten how to do it. And then she goes, here, I'll show you. And then she steps in front of me and does the whole fucking golf lesson thing where she's in front of me and she starts washing my hands and I'm like, I have a girlfriend. Ah, oh, this is too close. I'm a little bit uncomfortable washing my hands with some chick in a red dress. Is this aggressive sexual touching? I'm not sure. 
I, I'm just like, when does this stop being an immersive experience and begin me cheating on my girlfriend? <laughs> so I'm like, ah, I'm not comfortable with this, not having a good time. And then she's like, yeah, that's great. And then w finish washing my hands. And then she's like, all right, are you ready for the next step? And I'm like, I don't think so. I think I'm ready to go home and apologize to my girl. And then she pulls out, uh, she pulls out a napkin. She goes, here, dry your hands with this. And then winks at me. I'm like, huh? Okay. I hope the next step isn't here. Put on this condom. Or I'll fucking stab you. I'm like, alright. So I get the napkin and then it has shit written on it. And I'm like, oh, thank God. This is the next step. Fuck. And, uh, I... <laughs> And I read the instructions and, and it just says, choke me, daddy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. On the instructions, it says, exit the bar, immediately turn left and wait outside this restaurant at this address. And I'm like, oh, thank God. And I was like, thank you very much. Goodbye. And she's like, bye, sweetie. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I leave. And I leave the bar and I follow the instructions. And uh, I wait outside the... I start walking towards the restaurant and outside the restaurant is some girl on her phone. So I just go and I stand away from her so I don't look like a creeper. I don't want to freak her out. And she's talking on the phone. She's like, yeah, yeah, he's here. He's here. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, it's him. And I'm like, oh, oh, she's an, she must be an actor. All right. So I look at her and she's like, and then she hang, and she's like, I'm going to go speak to him. She hangs up the phone. She goes, hey, Lewis. How you going, man? I'm like, ah, oh, I'm really confused to be honest. I don't, I don't know if I'm enjoying this. There's a lot of riddles. I thought I was gonna get raped in a bathroom. I told an old woman to fuck off, and this dude put his fingers in my mouth. I, I mean, the only positive thing about this experience is I got the mirror bitch to do a dab. And uh, look, I'm just, I'm just not having a good night, man. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I was just like, yeah, I'm good. Fucking, what's next? And she goes, oh, that's great. My name's whatever. I forget her name. She goes, oh, uh, let's let's go, man. Do you want to have a drink? And I was like, ah, oh, here we go. This is the aggressive sexual touching coming back into my world. And I'm like, yes, <sighs> let's go for a drink. I'm just really trying to convey my nonverbal, my nonverbal consent. I'm not giving you any, any I'm, I'm giving nonverbal unenthusiastic consent, man. If this was university, you get expelled. So she's like, all right, let's go for a drink. I'm like, okay. And she's like, how have you been? I haven't seen you for years. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've been pretty good. Fucking, I'm just like, oh, if I don't pretend that I've known this girl for years, my girlfriend's going to be shitty when I tell her that I didn't do it. So I'm like, ah, oh, let's do the immersive experience then. I'm like, yeah, look, yeah, how have you been? Old friend. And she's like, yeah, good. I've just finished babysitting. I don't know why I do it because I hate kids. And I was like, yeah, so, so do I, man. But, you know, money's money. You got to do something. She's like, yeah, yeah, you do. All right. Hey, let's go go down this alleyway. Um, I'll meet you at the bar in a second. And I was like, fuck. All right. Going down the alleyway for some more aggressive sexual touching. About to get raped. This is where it happens. It didn't happen in the bathroom stall, but it's going to fucking happen in the alleyway. I at least hope she's attractive. So I go down the, the alleyway and I walk in and this chick has left me. So I'm just by myself with face paint on, freaking out. Got my rape whistle in my hand. Got my pepper spray in my other hand. And I go down here and then this homeless dude comes out from around the corner and he goes, ah, hey man, boo. I'm like, fuck. Please be an actor. Don't actually be a homeless guy. Pretty sure he was an actor because he grabs my hand and he had clean hands. And I'm like, oh, that's why the chick got me to wash my hands so that I didn't have any fucking cum on it or something. So he grabs my hand and he takes me around the corner and he goes, hey man, how you going? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, look, I, look, I'm all right. And he goes, brilliant, dude. And he points at a building. He goes, ah, you see that building? And I was like, yes, I do. He goes, it's pretty big, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's a big building. And he goes, have you ever sworn at a building before? And I'm just like, oh, just... 
No. No, I've never sworn at a building before. But I assume this is an exercise in getting me out of my comfort zone. So I will oblige you. And I said, no. I've never sworn at a building before. And he goes, ah, oh, maybe we should do it tonight. And I was like, yeah, maybe we should. He goes, why don't you yell, fuck you, building? And I was like, ah, oh, do you want better than that? And I was like, oi, Billy, you're a cunt. <laughs> and he goes, oh, oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, awesome, man. All right, go in here. And he took me around the alleyway corner and it's like this back door and I come in, I walk in this door and then he just fucking disappears and I'm like, it's freaking out, dude. Having a panic attack. I'm like, oh, what the fuck's next? Dude, I don't like talking to anyone, man. Let alone 30 people trying to get me to do different shit. And they're all strangers. And I'm also supposed to take some bullshit meaning from it. I'm like, all right, what's next? And I go in this door and it's this chick standing in a church. It's an, it's an empty church. There's all the pews. <clears throat> she's standing at the front. And she's even shorter than the mirror girl. She would have been like five foot two, five foot three. Classic fucking theater girl, right? Really short, lots of energy. Standing at the front. And uh, I'm like, okay. Uh, I guess I'm at the church now. So I go and I sit in the pews. About halfway towards her. She's like maybe 10 meters away. And then she just looks at me and she she beckons me with her hand. I'm like, okay. So I stand up out of the pew and I come closer to her, to the front row. And then she goes, nah, closer. So I come up and I'm, I'm maybe like a, a meter away from her. I'm trying to, re I'm trying to maintain respectful distance i'm a six foot eight male alone with a five foot three chick i'm like i don't want to freak her out i'm gonna maintain distance and then she's like nah closer so i come close and i'm maybe like maybe like 10 centimeters away from her and she's like nah closer i'm like all right and now we're touching chest to chest well it's more like her chest is like on my crotch and my chest is touching nothing her head is coming to the bottom of my rib cage. I'm like this. I'm, I, I assume this was supposed to be some sort of eye contact scenario, but all you're smelling is my terrified bo, my rape repellent sweat. <laughs> and so, then she, what she does is she reaches up, she grabs the back of my neck, and she pulls me down to her, her head, looking in my eyes. And it's, and it's like she's pulling me in to kiss her. And I'm like, I'm not, I am not doing that shit. I am not kissing another woman just because I paid $100, all right? I'll go to the brothel for that. Um, so I pull her down. She pulls me down. And I'm like, dude, this chick wants me to kiss her. And then I'm thinking, hang on. Did, did this chick also kiss my girlfriend and the other four people that I started off this experience with too? I'm like, if she kissed my girlfriend, one, I'm single, so maybe I can kiss her. But also, if she kissed the other four people, I don't want herpes. I'm not going to kiss this chick. And she keeps pulling me closer and closer, and I kind of pull back, and then she pulls me in, and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to make out with a stranger today. So I try and, like, curve my head around, and then she pulls me in closer, and she pulls me in next to her head. I'm like, oh, thank fuck, she wants to tell me a secret. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. Because I was almost like... I don't know what I was going to do. I mean, imagine if I thought she wanted me to kiss her and I went to kiss her. I would have been kicked out and charged with sexual assault. I really misread her body language there. It was the height thing. Because she was pulling me down towards her head. I didn't realize she was pulling me towards her ear. I thought she was pulling me towards her fucking lips. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want to kiss this chick, man. Oh, that would have been in headlines. Comedian assaults actor in immersive alone experience. Oh fuck. So she pulls me down really close and she 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 whispers, what did she say? She's like, um can't even remember what she said. I just was like, all I could think of, oh thank fuck I didn't kiss her. That would have been Oh man, thank the Lord she didn't kiss me. Fuck, that would have been awkward. <laughs> so that happened. She whispered, I don't know, I think she whispered some instructions. She's like, hey yeah. Do you want to go in to the next place? And I was like, yeah, I think I do want to go to the next place. Because 
I, I almost fucking kissed you. And that's really awkward, isn't it? <laughs> So then, then she she takes my hand and she leads me into the next room and it's not a door, it's a fucking, it's a crawl space. So I get on my hands and knees and ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this about tall people, but they are even tall on their knees. So I got to crawl through this space, but I had to somehow be lower than the average person's crawling height. So I'm crawling through this fucking room, man. And then, um... What else? I get through there, and, uh, <laughs> the next room is like this, what was it? Oh, it was like a bar. That's right. It was like a bar, and the bartender was a mime. And then there was this girl sitting at the bar in like a unicorn onesie. And I come in, and I just sit next to her at the bar, and I look at her, and I go, oh, sick onesie. And she ignores me. I'm like, all right. So I look at the mime. And I'm like, hey, man. And he's a mime. So he doesn't say anything. I'm like, cool. Paid a hundred bucks to get fucking ignored in a bar. Could have done this anywhere else. And I guarantee you there'd be weirder units in that bar than some chick in a onesie and a mime. And then the mime... He, uh, he goes like this. He's like, what do you want to drink? Well, he doesn't say it, but he goes, he gestures at all the, the alcohol. He gets out some spirits and he goes, huh? You want this? And I'm like, uh, no, thank you. And then he gives me this really angry face and he points at it like, you got to have it. I'm like, no, man. And then he's like, I don't know. And he keeps, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to let you get me drunk, man. I know that's when the aggressive sexual. Sorry, it stopped again. My bad. I don't know why it does this shit. I'm like, no, I'm not going to let you fucking get me drunk. I don't want this aggressive sexual touching business, okay? I'm finished with that shit. Not interested. And he keeps pointing at the, the spirits and I just go, I don't drink, man. And then he goes, oh, fair enough. And then he gets me a bottle of water and he fucking pours some water in a shot glass. And I, and I have the shot of water. And I was like, okay, that was fucking immersive, wasn't it? I'm so enlightened now. And then the chick in the onesie, she stands up and uh, she starts making all these animal noises like, ah, ooh, ee, ah. And so I stand up as well. And then she grabs my hands and she starts dancing with me. She starts going, doo, 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 and spinning her, like she does the whole thing where she puts my arm up and she spins herself around under it. She's like, ah, ooh, wee. And then music starts playing out of nowhere. She's like, yeah, woo. And I'm like, and the chick again, she's like five foot three. I'm six, eight. Trying to dance like a, I, I, I didn't even dance. I stood there and I went like this with my arms. I just let her move my arms. I'm like, I don't want to dance. I'm sorry. I don't care how much the fucking tickets were. I'm not dancing with some chick in a fucking onesie. All right. I don't want the mime to laugh at me. I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> he already shamed me for not doing a shot out of a dirty wine bottle. A dirty spirit bottle. I don't want to fucking dance, right? So she finishes her dancing and then she goes, Go! Woo! And she grabs my hand and pushes me into the next room. And dude, I can't even finish the fucking experience in a podcast. Like, there were like six more rooms. I'm trying to think of the other interesting ones. There was one that was, there was a chick in a strobe light and she was dancing around and moving around me and the strobe light was flashing and I couldn't fucking see her. That was really unsettling. There was another room where there were two twins. I went into one room, there was a girl, and then she she kicked me out. I went into the next room, and there was the same girl, and I was like, fuck. And then she told me to turn around, and the other twin was standing behind me. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, they're twins. Um, what else happened? Oh, there was another room where I walk in, and there's this girl in a lab coat, and she gives me two books, and she goes, hey, welcome to this experiment. Can you get around the room without touching the floor using only these two books you only have four moves and I was like uh I mean yeah that's fucking easy so I put the books on the floor and I do it in two steps because my legs are so long and she's like ah I, well done and I was like thank you and then she kicks me into the next room and then there was another there was another room where I had to crawl for fucking ages on my hands and knees 
And then I, and then there was this chick that jumped out. She was like, ah! And I fucking shit my pants. And then she started playing patty cake with me. And getting me to blow fluff. She put fluff in my hand and tell me to blow it. And then she would go... <coughs> pretending to laugh but speaking no English. And I was like, fucking... That's immersive, isn't it? Um... I suppose the only other interesting room was... Uh, I came into this one room and there was this girl in another lab coat. And there was a computer screen in front of me. And she got me to sit down on the chair... And uh, she's like, I'm going to ask you a series of, series of questions. And the pictures that were flashing on the computer were the five people that I went through the experience with, minus my girlfriend, because she doesn't have Facebook. So I'm like, oh, what they've done here is they've looked up everyone on social media and they're going to ask them a bunch of questions that would be like uh, weird for a stranger to know. But the problem is I have a very public, on purpose, social media presence so anything that you would be able to find out, I would probably be able to say, yeah, I kind of I kind of paid money to get that information out there because that's my job. So I don't think you're going to find anything surprising. So she starts reading out these questions and she's like, do you feel like lots of people are watching you at all times? And I'm like, oh, I guess so. If I fucking put out a video, yeah, sure. And then she asked me a whole bunch of other questions and then... Um, one of the questions was, can you tell me a joke? And uh, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I just said, ah, uh, no, I don't know any jokes. And then she's like, but you're a comedian, aren't you? Like, oh, fuck, how did you know? Could that be the first thing that pops up when you Google my name? Ah, oh, this is so immersive. Uh, <clears throat> and she's like, but you're a comedian, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. Um, and then I started thinking through my jokes and I'm like, uh, look, I can tell, I can do the bit where I pretend to be gay Hitler, but, um, that's, that's very, uh, very dark and goes for 10 minutes. I think the impression could get boring if she's not into it. Uh, maybe, well, maybe I could tell my joke about the dream world accident. Uh, that, that might go, that might not go down well. Also, again, it goes for about 15 minutes. And is the most fucked up thing I've ever written. Um, oh, what about I tell her the joke about me uh, masturbating? No, I'm pretty sure that one would be sexual assault. Uh, and then I start thinking about, do I have any jokes that go for a minute? And uh, then I was just like, no, I don't. All of my jokes are like 10 minutes long and about the most fucked up things you can think of. So I was like, nah, sorry. I uh, don't have any jokes. And she's like, very well. And she moves me on into the next room. <clears throat> the next room, she just gets me to sit down in a chair. And she goes, <laughs> and then the last thing she says is, thank you very much, Ping and Pete. And I was like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking ruined. <laughs> <laughs> you called me Ping and Pete. You ruined the experience. I want my fucking money back. Um, and then the next room... Uh, I think there was, there was like fucking eight more rooms after that, but none of them were particularly interesting. They just got me to do a bunch of weird shit, some riddles, and then, and then, uh, you followed the path and you crawled your way out, went down some stairs and you entered, exited into a bar and you were reunited with all the people that you started the experience with. And I was like, well, fuck, that was immersive, wasn't it? So, uh, yeah, that was the alone experience. As much as I shit-talked it, I actually really did enjoy it, I think. Except for the fingers thing. I actually fucking hated that. Um, but everything else, I don't know. I, it was definitely a story to tell. So, yeah, that, that's that's the thing that happened. Now, how about we get into uh, miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Because um, we didn't do it last podcast. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, but sorry, we do... Have to do it this week, so I'm just gonna get uh, get my bloody emails up. Where are we? Uh, if you would like, miscellaneous bit at the end is the part of the podcast where I, um, where are we? Uh, part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by listeners. So if you have a question uh, that you would like answered, if you have any life advice, or even if you have just a cool story you think that I would like, uh, or you want to complain about something, send it in to podcast at loosespears.com and if I think it's funny or interesting or whatever, something I, I think I can make funny or interesting to talk about, I will use it on the podcast. 
So yeah, if you'd like me to answer your questions, podcast at loosebeers.com. Let's get into it. Um, where are we? Do, 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 do. What do we got here? Just um, vandalism stories. Here we go. All right. These are my favorites. All right. I'm not going to say the name because obviously this is criminal behavior. G'day, Lou. As a long-time fan of your stuff, I know you love some vandalism stories, and I just happen to have one. Very close to myself, my house is an abandoned industrial complex. For some reason, the company that has owned it for a long-ass time hasn't done anything with it. Well, everyone knows if something isn't being used, that means you're allowed to fucking break it. Uh, The entire place has tunnels underneath it, which are very cool to explore and mess around in. Despite the ever-present fear of encountering some drugged-up Deros or the owners of the property, both of which are very real fears. Anyway, earlier today, I decided to go in there like I do most Friday nights. Just, is that what you do on Friday nights, man? You hang out in an abandoned fucking warehouse? Dude, that's why people die, man. Because dumb cunts do shit like that. Every Friday night, I hang out in an abandoned warehouse that is known to be filled with Dero homeless people. <laughs> I decided to go in there just like I do most Friday nights, but this time I brought some tubes of paint, the acrylics shit, as well as some brushes. I went there with the intention of writing wholesome shit, and I learned that no matter how hard you try, vandalism always brings out the worst in people. Of of course it does. I've never I've never seen positive vandalism. Um, I ended up writing some very insightful things, such as "shut the fuck up" written in Chinese on the ground the phrase, your mum gay, and some other assorted shit. Hope you got some kicks out of my story, and I sincerely hope you have the shittest one humanely possible. Look, thank you, man. I do appreciate that one. Um, I'm, I'm going to give that, out of 10 on the vandalism scale, I'm going to give that one a solid 6. You get a few points for entering somewhere you shouldn't be, but you didn't really destroy something that someone cared about, so... Uh, I, I mean, I'm, you know... Back in, back in my day, it doesn't really compare to when we were in high school and we used to smash Audis for fun. So, uh, that smashing an Audi, I'm going to do like a 9, right? That's a very expensive car, absolutely horrible thing to do to someone. But you're painting your mum gain Chinese on the ground of an abandoned warehouse. Just saying that, I'm actually going to bump you now into a solid 5. But thank you for emailing in. If anyone wants to try and attempt to beat a 5 out of 10, by all means, send in an email. Um, where else are we? Alright, my best mate fucked me over. How should I react? Sup, Lewis. First time emailer, long time follower. Love your shit. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jason and my mate is Tremor. What a fucking weird name. Basically, long story short, I've been living overseas and my close mate and I moved in together couple of months down the track, I had things go missing, such as watches and money around the flat. Fucking hell, what a dog. Tremor also proclaimed he had, a, he had a missing watch and money gone. I believed it was the cleaner, so we fired her, which turned into a whole scandal. She even wanted to contact police, which I thought was strange if she could be the only person to have taken our stuff. Yeah, if you accuse someone of stealing and they go to the police... Chances are, they're not the fucking thief. Later on, we moved into a new apartment where he never paid rent, and one day, I had a few hundred dollars missing. It, could, it couldn't have been just... It could not have been anyone except for him. No one else was home when the money went missing. This was a, during a time when he was also planning to move in with his girlfriend, subsequently two months after moving into the new place. Because of this, I asked him to just take his already packed things and leave immediately. My girlfriend was already suspicious of him, so we searched his room and found his missing watch, as well as a large amount of money that was missing from my drawer. Tremor also denies all these allegations of stealing. After all the pieces coming together, I realized my best mate had been fucking me for months. I also have proof that he used my card on a delivery app with over 50 transactions. That's a whole story within itself. Our group of friends here believed him mostly and think I'm lying. Right. They hardly talk to me and one of them even lives with him now. Anyway, how do you think I should react? Is it worth just leaving it all together and moving on? Or should I take it to the police and try to get justice slash revenge? E.g. try to get this motherfucker deported. Cheers, Colonel. Uh, yeah, look, man... (coughs) 
Uh, I think just leave it. Uh, if the guy has moved out and you have your stuff back, just leave it. He's a fucking shit mate. And uh, you know what? If your friends believe him over you and they're treating you like shit, fuck them too. They will, they will end up getting fucked by him at some point. So I would just leave it, man. Sounds like a shitty thing to happen. Uh, it's not worth getting revenge over. You've moved in with your girlfriend. He's out of your house. You kind of did the right thing. Now, I, I would maybe apologize to the cleaner. Maybe hire her for your house if, if you are still in the same area. Because that sucks that she lost her job because your mate was a shit person. But, um, yeah, I, I would just leave it, man. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to do three just because I didn't do any last week, and I really need to punish you cunts because you missed out on it. Uh, this one's from a lovely lady. Uh, I stumbled into a relationship, and I don't know how to leave. Sorry, this is from a girl. Uh, hey, Lewis. I'm a fan from over in the States. I've been watching your stuff for a while. Blah, blah, blah. Looking forward to see you come here eventually. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, I'm coming here with a sort of romance issue that is that I've been having lately. Since I know you're an expert on the subject, uh, I, 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 that, that, the term expert is used very, very loosely on this podcast. Uh, seeing as you're an expert on this subject, I'm still in high school at the moment, and my main priority this year was just doing my own thing and chatting with friends during school hours. Recently, however, I managed to stumble into a relationship with this guy called Alex entirely on accident. So me and Alex are in a class together, along with one of my close friends who I've been friends with for a few years, and I've spent most of the year just talking about nerdy shit with him like video game news and what have you. A short while ago, maybe a few weeks, he asked me at the end of class if I wanted to go and see a movie with him. He didn't call it a date until the night of, but I inferred it pretty easily, easily enough with how he acted before asking. Since this was going to be my first date, and it was a movie I'd been wanting to see anyway, I said, why not? And said, yes, good on you, go for it. Uh, as an aside, I'm not personally interested in anything rom romantic in nature or anything further than that, and I didn't really foresee being interested in the future. Should have, I take it back, should have just said no, or yes, but as friends. Um, so I went to the date and it went all right. Oh. There are a few moments of attempted awkward conversation from his end, but otherwise it went out, it went well. At the end of it though, while waiting to get picked up, he did something I didn't expect to at all. He asked me to be his girlfriend. I'm a pretty big pussy in general, and I was caught by surprise and said yes. Uh-oh! <laughs> you fucked up! Man, girls are just too nice sometimes, dude. Uh, I end up saying yes. We've had a few other dates and they went fairly well, although we've pretty much exhausted all of our conversation topics. Anyway, while Alex is a cool guy and nice enough that I don't want to mess up our friendship, I'm really not interested in being in a relationship and I don't want to lead him on or make things worse later, especially since he seems genuinely interested in me. Also, there's the fact that he seems to be jealous to some degree of my relationship, of my friendship with the close friend in the same period, because me and them have another period together, a oh, class, another class together, and in, in the class that both of them are in, I usually end up talking to the other friend a lot more. While I, do, while I didn't want to get involved in this high school drama, there's nothing I can do about it now, so I'd appreciate any advice you might have on getting out of this situation. Uh, yeah, look, Nadia, um... There's no easy way to get out of it. You're just going to have to fucking tell the truth while omitting a couple of details. I would just say, hey, uh, man, hey, Alex, I've really enjoyed our time together, but I'm sorry I don't, I don't want to be in a relationship in high school. Look, just tell him you want to focus on high school or if you have a hobby or an interest or something that, that's going well in your life. Just say, I'm really sorry, Alex. I really need to focus on my knitting at the moment, or I really need to focus on playing World of Warcraft. I can't have a relationship right now. I'm focusing on school. Uh, I'm really sorry that it hasn't worked out. I appreciate our time together. The dates were lovely, but I just don't have time to be in a relationship. Um, I hope the best for you, and I hope this doesn't hurt our friendship. Uh, spoiler alert, it is going to hurt your friendship because you're going to break up with him, but uh, he will see you every day, and in his mind, he'll be like, ah, I could win her back. Um, so, yeah, I think, Nadia, you've just fucked up here. And you've agreed to date a person that you never wanted to date. So now you have to 
end that relationship. There's no easy way around it. Um, the only the only way to make it easier is to soften the blow a little bit and say, I need to focus on something else. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, best of luck, Nadia. Sorry, you fucked up, and you're gonna have to deal with the repercussions. Thank you very much to everyone for listening to the Speared Sundays podcast. I will see you next Sunday. If you would like to get early access to the podcast and all the videos that I upload, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. It helps me uh, pay for the storage unit that I film by monthly bull in. I'm paying Todd now, my editor, who edits all my videos because I don't have time to do it with radio anymore. And uh, basically, all of the Patreon money goes towards those two things because Todd works every week, the storage unit costs money every month, and the podcast costs money every month. So if you would like to help me (laughs) move past breaking even on my online content, please do consider supporting me there. And thanks for all the feedback on Lure Review. Really do appreciate it. I will be back with another video on Tuesday for sure. It's all finished and ready to go because I do weekly videos. And I will see you next Sunday. Have a fucking shit one.